Chapter One of Book Two of Les Misérables, Volume Two, by Victor Hugo. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Peter Eastman. Les Misérables, Volume Two, by Victor Hugo, translated by Isabel Florence Hapgood. Book Two, The Ship Orion. Chapter One, Number Two Four Six O One becomes Number Nine Four Three O. Jean Valjean had been recaptured. The reader will be grateful to us if we pass rapidly over the sad details. We will confine ourselves to transcribing two paragraphs published by the journals of that day, a few months after the surprising events which had taken place. At Montreuil sur Mer. These articles are rather summary. It must be remembered that at that epoch the Gazette des Tribunaux was not yet in existence. We borrow the first from the Drapeau Blanc. It bears the date of July twenty fifth, eighteen twenty three. An arrondissement of the Pas de Calais has just been the theatre of an event quite out of the ordinary course. A man who was a stranger in the department, and who bore the name of Monsieur Madeleine, had, thanks to the new methods, resuscitated some years ago an ancient local industry, the manufacture of jet and of black glass trinkets. He had made his fortune in the business, and that of the arrondissement as well, we will admit. He had been appointed mayor in recognition of his services. The police discovered that Monsieur Madeleine was no other than an ex-convict who had broken his ban, condemned in 1796 for theft, and named Jean Valjean. Jean Valjean has been recommitted to prison. It appears that previous to his arrest he had succeeded in withdrawing from the hands of Monsieur Lafitte a sum of over half a million which he had lodged there, and which he had, moreover, and by perfectly legitimate means, acquired in his business. No one has been able to discover where Jean Valjean has concealed this money since his return to prison at Toulon. The second article, which enters a little more into detail, is an extract from the Journal de Paris of the same date. A former convict who had been liberated, named Jean Valjean, has just appeared before the court of assizes of the VAR, under circumstances calculated to attract attention. This wretch had succeeded in escaping the vigilance of the police. He had changed his name, and had succeeded in getting himself appointed mayor of one of our small northern towns. In this town he had established a considerable commerce. He has at last been unmasked and arrested, thanks to the indefatigable zeal of the public prosecutor. He had for his concubine a woman of the town, who died of a shock at the moment of his arrest. This scoundrel, who is endowed with Herculean strength, found means to escape. But three or four days after his flight, the police laid their hands on him once more, in Paris itself, at the very moment when he was entering one of those little vehicles which run between the capital and the village of Montfermeil, seine was. He is said to have profited by this interval of three or four days of liberty to withdraw a considerable sum deposited by him with one of our leading bankers. This sum has been estimated at six or seven hundred thousand francs. If the indictment is to be trusted, he has hidden it in some place known to himself alone, and it has not been possible to lay hands on it. However that may be, the said Jean Valjean has just been brought before the assizes of the Department of the VAR as accused of highway robbery, accompanied with violence about eight years ago, on the person of one of those honest children who, as the patriarch of Ferny has said in immortal verse, arrive from Savoy every year, and who with gentle hands do clear those long canals choked up with soot. This bandit refused to defend himself. It was proved by the skilful and eloquent representative of the public prosecutor, 
that the theft was committed in complicity with others, and that Jean Valjean was a member of a band of robbers in the south. Jean Valjean was pronounced guilty, and was condemned to the death penalty in consequence. This criminal refused to lodge an appeal. The king, in his inexhaustible clemency, has deigned to commute his penalty to that of penal servitude for life. Jean Valjean was immediately taken to the prison at Toulon. The reader has not forgotten that Jean Valjean had religious habits at montreuil sur mer Some papers, among others the Constitutional, presented this commutation as a triumph of the priestly party. Jean Valjean changed his number in the galleys. He was called 9430. However, and we will mention it at once, in order that we may not be obliged to recur to the subject. The prosperity of montreuil sur mer vanished with M. Madeleine. All that he had foreseen during his night of fever and hesitation was realized. Lacking him, there actually was a soul lacking. After this fall, there took place at montreuil sur mer that egotistical division of great existences which have fallen, that fatal dismemberment of flourishing things, which is accomplished every day, obscurely, in the human community, and which history has noted only once, because it occurred after the death of Alexander. Lieutenants are crowned kings. Superintendents improvise manufacturers out of themselves. Envious rivalries arose. Monsieur Madeleine's vast workshops were shut, his buildings fell to ruin, his workmen were scattered. Some of them quitted the country, others abandoned the trade. Thenceforth everything was done on a small scale instead of on a grand scale, for lucre instead of the general good. There was no longer a center. Everywhere there was competition and animosity. Monsieur Madeleine had reigned over all and directed all, no sooner had he fallen than each pulled things to himself. The spirit of combat succeeded to the spirit of organization, bitterness to cordiality, hatred of one another to the benevolence of the founder towards all. The threads which Monsieur Madeleine had set were tangled and broken, the methods were adulterated, the products were debased. Confidence was killed. The market diminished for lack of orders, salaries were reduced, the workshops stood still, bankruptcy arrived. And then there was nothing more for the poor. All had vanished. The state itself perceived that someone had been crushed somewhere. Less than four years after the judgment of the Court of Assizes, Establishing the identity of Jean Valjean and Monsieur Madeleine for the benefit of the galleys, the cost of collecting taxes had doubled in the arrondissement of montreuil sur mer and Monsieur Viel called attention to the fact in the rostrum in the month of February, 1827. End of Book Two, Chapter One